which is Gemstones, recently concluded its first season on HBO and has been renewed for a second. I'm Riley Chow of Gold Derby, here with Cassidy Freeman, who plays Amber, the wife of Danny McBride's character, Jesse Gemstone. Cassidy, how is it auditioning for characters and now being in this television role that's always introduced first as the wife? That's an interesting question. I'll go with the first part first. Um, how is it to audition for this stuff? Um, it is, uh, I find it really exhilarating to audition. I know a lot of actors don't like auditioning. They think that it's kind of a pain. It is, it's stressful. And it's, um, it's like, you know, um, emotional sweat inducing, which we all know is, smells worse than regular sweat. And it's, um, it's always an opportunity to hear the word no. So that's never fun. Uh, but the opportunity to learn this kind of work, go into a room and play with people like Danny um, McBride is kind of, to me, a huge opportunity. Um, and I love auditioning um, as much as I hate it. I love it. It's a kind of equal part. Um, I think that it's an important part of the process. I think it's important to hear the words out loud and to know kind of who you're going to be hanging out with a little bit. Um, this is a lot, like a lot of times this is a big part of your life that you are um, committing to. And usually you have to move as well. So that's also something to keep in mind. And the audition process kind of gives you a vibe um, of what to expect a little bit. And I think that, I hope that like if the job wasn't right, that my instincts would be like, no, no, not doing that. Um, so that's number one. That's how it is auditioning for stuff like this. It's also like really exciting and you walk. Oh my gosh, like life could be different after today. Um, and uh, how is it being the, the wife? Um, you know, it's funny. I mean, Amber is definitely um, a wife and she's definitely uh, plays a role, but I don't think of her that way. I think of it as like a pretty badass female character in um, in a really incredible show. And uh, was there ever a question of which character you were playing when you were auditioning for the show? Did you try out for other parts or reconsidered or was it always you had your uh, sights set on Amber? Well, when Danny created the show, um, he created the, the role of Judy Gemstone for Edie Patterson. Um, they had worked together on Vice Principals and they had a great rapport and they wanted to do this. Um, they wanted to kind of challenge the uh, the men and women have to be romantically involved in order to be in a show together. And um, and so they decided to create this brother sister thing um, that was before the audition process you know, ever happened. So for me, the only other female part really was Amber Gemstone. And that's what I came into audition for. Now, when I heard about the show, I figured that it'd be more satirical. Um, what do you think the show is trying to say? Uh, and what's its message? That's interesting. You thought that it would be more satirical. Like, like, what do you mean by that? Uh, I, I thought that it would be uh, kind of really poking fun. Um, at the televangelists, uh, kind of g going much harder about that. Uh, whereas, you know, in the early episodes, it's largely about Danny McBride trying to track down this guy who has been extorting money from him. Yeah. Um, you know, I had the benefit of sitting next to Danny and most of our cast at PCAs to hear answers to questions. So my answers are kind of out of their mouths, and I can't take full. Um, ownership over them. But, uh, you know, I think, I, I hope, I think a lot of people, first of all, expected this show maybe to be a bit more satirical, as you say, to be um, a bit more poking fun specifically at televangelists, not necessarily trying to take anyone down, but sort of like highlighting the humor of something that is other. Not at it because none of us live in that world. Um, but this show, I think, takes a bit bolder of a step. And instead of just trying to make fun of something that is make funnable, um, I think that it attempts to use televangelism as a vehicle to highlight a, a, a maybe a bigger issue or a bigger thing to talk about, which is hypocrisy. Um, and that 
uh, is something that we can all identify with um, outside of ourselves and inside of ourselves. And I think that that's just a much more challenging and interesting show to watch is something that, yes, makes you laugh at like abundant full frontal nudity and um, and lots of like butt jokes and um, and all the things that you would expect from the kind of potty humor that could be that kind of funny. But at the same time, you're also finding humor in um, the ridiculousness and the reality of um, of highlighting such a relatable issue, um, which is ridiculous. <laughs> and then you also at the same time feel for these people. Um, they have uh, they have depth to them. They're not just one or two note characters. They're very complicated people. And um, and I hope that that like is is a is something that that pulls people in even further than um, than like a regular comedy would. And how were you able to draw on your own experiences to enter this world? Uh, like, like not at all. <laughs> I didn't. Um, I didn't grow up going to church. I didn't grow up going to synagogue. My dad is Jewish. My mother was raised Christian. I. Um, we weren't a very religious family, and my parents always had this idea that. Uh, you know, if you were interested, like I had friends that went to Sunday school and I'd be like, I want to go to Sunday school. Why? I don't know. But I used to say things like that. And my parents would be like, yeah, go experience it. You know, um, I've only been to like 500 bar mitzvahs in my life um, between the age of five and now. Uh, so I, I've experienced these places of worship. I've, I've experienced people in it. I've never experienced mega church televangelists to that degree. I've maybe seen it on television um, or on YouTube videos. Uh, so, I, you know, I think that, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm glad for that, not for my own life, but just for the process of this show. You know, I, I don't want to be mimicking anyone. I also kind of want to find the truth in these people. And I don't think that lies in necessarily their, their church going selves. I think it lies who they are um, and that that's more interesting to me but I didn't have a lot of like life experience lending me to this character uh, specifically um, in, in, in her religion. Now I understand that you specific or you deliberately didn't go out to these uh, mega churches for research but what have you heard from them? What have I heard from them? Yeah like uh, has, what has been their response to the show uh, that you know of? Oh, that's fascinating. I don't know. Have you heard from them? Because I would <laughs> like to know what their response is. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I know that I have family that are religious. Um, I know that I have family that take religion very seriously and actually find this show to be amusing. Um, I think it's, I think it challenges, you know, us versus them. I think it, I think it kind of like, makes people think about their their relationship to God or their relationship to their belief or their relationship to worship and also their relationship their relationships outside of the church are they living the life that they want to be living um, in in their in their life outside church um, that's kind of more interesting to me but I haven't specifically heard any any response from fellow evangelists they can email me though if they want to I'd love I to. <laughs> I see you interacting uh, with fans a lot uh, on Twitter. What would you say has been the response to Amber specifically? That's funny. I have actually haven't signed on to Twitter except uh, yesterday uh, for the first time in about four months. Um, and that's my, that's my boycott on Twitter just because I'm not a huge fan of of who uses Twitter, to be honest with you. Sorry, Twitter. Um, okay, I, I got to find out what I'm looking at now. <laughs> Instagram. I do interact with, I, I try to respond to fans on Instagram. Um, I find that sharing photos is a much more, um, I don't know, a, a better feeling social media. If there is a good feeling social media uh, avenue, Instagram would probably be my choice. Um, but Twitter, uh, I do I do try to respond to fans on Twitter when I do get on it. Um, the response to Amber has been uh, much better Recently, I think since the episode when she sort of took her power back, episode eight, um, when she learned the truth about about Jesse and um, and she kind of didn't take take it anymore, and she she took she took it into her own hands, so to speak. 
Um, and I think that the overall response has been that Amber's kind of a badass. Um, but what I think, you know, her closet of, of artillery aside, I just think that it was refreshing to see someone no longer um, eat the lies, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I, I did pull up uh, your Twitter here, and it's at Cassidy Freeman. You've got the check mark, and you've actually uh, responded to 13 bands in the last day. I yeah, wonder. like I said, it was just yesterday. <laughs> Before that, I hadn't <laughs> signed on in a long time. Okay. Um, now, this show has a few different directors. It's got Danny McBride, of course, and Jody Hill, and David Gordon Green. Uh, can you contrast their styles? Sure. Danny... Um directed the pilot and uh and then he would sort of come in and be there a lot whenever we needed him otherwise but the rest of the season at least on paper was being directed by jody and and um dg and david gordon green and so um those two are very different uh jody is someone who uh likes for the moment to grow um he will come in with a real specific idea and kind of not share it right away because i think he really enjoys the collaboration of what could happen in the moment um sometimes that tends to take like a little bit more time but oftentimes like real magic comes out of that conversely david um david is usually like so clear about what he wants and something i really love about the way that david directs is that he um he'll ask you to do something that feels so bizarre and left field and like, what, what am I doing? Um, but, and Edie Patterson, who plays Judy, she gave me a great piece of advice when I first got there. She said, you know, just, just do it. Like, don't question it, just do it. And she couldn't have been more right. Um, there's just something, I, and I think part of it is that he has an idea and the other part of it is that he wants us to kind of get out of our head and be really present in the present moment. So both directors have this beautiful vision of, um, of magic in the present moment, and they kind of come at it two different ways. I feel like people love to ask about improv. Uh, I understand that there's a lot on this set. Can you tell when some improvisation is going to make it into the show, and are there certain people whose uh, improvisations make it into the show kind of all the time? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, some people just have a, a, a pure talent for it. Um, sometimes it gets really inspired between two people. Um, you know, Edie obviously has an incredible uh, ability to do that kind of improv. And she sort of, she and Danny together also have a great chemistry. And then they kind of allow everyone else sort of come in and add what they will. Um, you know, Adam is obviously an incredible comic. Uh, Tony is an incredible comic. Tim Baltz is like this super secret ninja comic. And, um, you know, sometimes we'll go off on a tangent and we'll all know that like, it's not really, that's probably not gonna make it in. But when something feels really awesome, when it's improv, we all sort of have this understanding that we should probably do that a couple more times, that that's something that's probably gonna be in in the script or, or, or make the cut. But truth be told, you never know at the end of the day. Um, and I wouldn't say that there's anyone who's, like any one actor whose stuff always or doesn't, I think it's kind of what, what works for the moment. And what's really cool about having the freedom to do that kind of improv is that, um, you may not even know what would work in the moment. And, uh, and you might think like, oh, remember that thing that so-and-so said? That was so funny, that's definitely gonna make it in, but like for whatever reason, it doesn't work. And to have options is really, I think, well, <laughs> to have options probably drives our editors insane, but it also gives them maybe a sense of freedom um, to craft what will truly work for the scene, which is the most important thing. And where are you with season two right now? It's being written currently in Charleston. I'm not. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know when you're shooting it? Uh, probably about the same time next year. We'll probably go back um, sometime in February or early March and, um, and start shooting. And uh, how do you find it working on uh, shows these days where 
Um, you know, the show might put out six hours of content. Previously, you were on Smallville for years, making maybe 16 or 18 hours of content a year that might take up a lot more of your year. Do you like having the stability of a job that you'll be at for most of the year, or do you like having the freedom to kind of jump around? Um, I, I look at every job, I mean, I kind of, you know, I look at every job as an incredible opportunity if, um, to, to work. But I, I prefer the shorter seasons. Um, it means that there is less content, um, but it also means that uh, you get more life, you know, around it, and there's more opportunities to be creative in, in other ways. Um, you know, nine months of work for 22 episodes of television, it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work on the crew. Um, it's a lot of work on us, especially if we're not living or we live, you know, I like to move to a different city um you know to to do that work it's like it's an awesome opportunity i was so 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 grateful for it and i wouldn't trade it for anything but um this show allows me to still have a home base and have sort of like a consistent life outside of that so to me that's kind of the best of both worlds all right cassidy well thanks very much for taking the time to chat uh, we're coming up on award season, Golden Globe, SAG, hopefully uh, Dan McBride can cash in on his IOU for vice principals. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in whatever you have coming up next. And Thank to you. our uh, viewers, uh, this is probably the first of many uh, interviews we'll have with television actresses um, and actors this season. And thank you for those really thoughtful questions. I just want to say those were awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs>